And if they try to hug me, I tell my children that I'm clean and they're dirty. You can see a very hurt look come on their face when she puts her hands out and says, don't touch me. Her children are starting to act out, exhibit some of the same quirky things. Her son is very well trained to use hand sanitizer constantly. Jenny's rituals have kept him up late at night to where he doesn't get enough sleep so that he can perform at school. I don't feel that's an environment for him to live in. Jenny's eight-year-old son is living with me now. Giving my son to my mom was a huge example of how much this is affecting my life. I said there was some good news, and I said it was going to be maybe the strangest good news in the history of television. Right. And the good news is there's enough wrong with you that you don't need to make up stuff. <laughs> Okay, I, I told you that was, see, did you see her smile when I said that? You, and and I, I, I know you're smiling because you think it's funny to hear, but it's also smiling because it's probably a relief in some ways at some level. And what I'm telling you is, the good news is, I feel like I have a really good handle on what it is, and it's very treatable. That's good. Which means that we can get you better, and it isn't what you're presenting is. I don't think you're a germ phobic at all. I, I really don't. I, I don't think you're, you're, you're not even a very good fake germ phobic, but <laughs> you're, you're certainly not a real germ phobic. And I think what you're doing is you're so upset and you're so emotionally wrought inside that you're trying to find rituals or behaviors, anything that will address what you're feeling. And so you've cast about and found this. You, you've found, well, maybe if I became hyper clean and hyper sensitive and hyper controlled and contained, maybe this would all go away or something. But it won't. That isn't it. I think you've invented this uh, in an effort to try to control what's really going on, but it isn't. So it's kind of fake and it kind of isn't. It, it feels real. But you're not very effective. It isn't lessening your anxiety. It isn't working for you. No. Why don't, why don't we just decide that right now, as real as it feels, let's just assume that we're just going to find out what is real, and we're going to give you some things that you know are real, and we're going to cope with this very, very differently so we can get this family back together. Okay. Okay, can we do that? Wouldn't you feel better about that? Very much. All right, when we come back, I'm going to check in with Caitlin to make sure that this bridesmaid um, lets her sister be the boss on her wedding day. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yesterday, and I, you know, I said earlier that you always, if you have a family member that has begun to behave in ways that are inconvenient, meaning that they're disruptive to the normal flow of things, you always have the question, um, is this just manipulative behavior or is it mental illness? Because there's a real big difference in how you respond to that. And you know, hopefully today we've talked a little bit about where that line is and it's not always a clear distinction. Um, Caitlin, how do you feel about everything that's happened here today? I feel really good about it. I want you to be able to look your sister in the eye before that wedding takes place and say, you know what, I've really gained some insights, I've really gained some understanding and I'm going to cheer you on this day, and it is all about you. And when it's my turn, it's going to be all about me, and I'm going to have you standing with me as well. But you can trust me to be there for you on this day. And I want you to be able to do that and feel good about it and feel right about it. And I kind of got the feeling that that light bulb's come on over your head already. Yeah. But, I, but before that happens, I want you to know that you're going to be able to do that. Thank you. We've got a plan for you. And... We've, we've got a plan for you. And i tell you what I, I want to do is I'm going to ask Dr. Lawless um, to see you. He is the director of the PNP Center uh, in Dallas, Texas, which does both diagnostic and treatment. They focus a lot on the neurological aspects as well as the coping skills. And so we're going to arrange for you to go to the PNP Center and have a full workup and evaluation. All right, go to drphil.com for more information about what to do.